Hi, I'm Bart Hansen. I'm the owner and lead instructor for CrushLivePoker.com. The following hand comes from our call-in show that we record live at 2 p.m. Eastern Time every Monday. If you enjoy this video, hit that like button. And if you want to submit to be on the show, take a look at the information in the description. So this is at a 1-3 uh, game in uh, Connecticut, New York at Rivers Casino. Um, it's a 500 max uh, structure. Okay. And we are 800 effective. 500 max. And what was the blinds again? 1-3. One, 1-3? Three. One, three? Okay. 1-3. No limit. Okay. And it's a very late night or early morning, pretty juicy game. Yep. Um, we've got a 6 of clubs yep. in the cutoff. Okay. We've got uh, just one limp in front of us. Mm-hmm. And uh, I bump it up to 25. We've got a uh, very, very special villain right on our left who is calling everything uh, preflop. I mean everything. Like on the button? He's a, yeah. Okay. He's looking, uh, yep. Yeah. So um, it's, like I said, it's a, it's a pretty special game at the moment. And um, the uh, Asia on my left has been kind of, dominating the last hour or so just running good um and there's a bunch of players at this table who are looking to kind of uh you know get involved get some of their money back and uh he's sitting with about 1200 effective he's the main main villain and you have him covered no he has me covered so how, how deep are you 800 so you make it 25 and he calls or what correct yep. okay so the button he calls calls and then does the limper call uh, we've got the big blind who calls and the limper who calls. So right. we're, we're four ways to the flop. All right. So four ways, the special players on the button. So one limp from up front here, 25 with ace of clubs, six of clubs. So you're making it 25 over a limp at one, three again is what's the standard open, like 15 or 20 without a limp or something. It's, it's usually 15, but it's been every, every $15 open has been almost like family pot it's it sounds like a good game five to seven ways right right do you it sounds like a good game do you, do you ever see sean deeb kicking around here you said this was from rivers connected you right uh yeah, yeah i see him kicking around there so <laughs> often not so much uh uh in the recent months but um uh yeah he's he's he's, he's there quite a bit yeah all right so four ways to the flop the pot's 100 bucks okay yep yeah. and for the flop we've got uh seven of spades uh-huh five of spades yep Four of clubs. So you flop an open-ended straight draw with your ace four, or excuse me, with your right. ace six and a backdoor flush draw, right? Seven of spades, five of spades, four of clubs. Okay. Correct. Yep. Yep. And uh, it comes around check check to us, mm -hmm. and I elect to see bet fifty into a hundred. And the uh, special villain on the left, he flaps and. The other two step out of the way, so we get the kind of optimal scenario um, heads up against the villain. So that's an interesting and optimistic C bet here with a six of clubs uh, mm -hmm. on seven on seven of spades, four of spades, four of clubs, or excuse me, seven of spades, five of spades, four of clubs. And again, you know, one of the things that is sort of newer school no limit that top section has helped me when I did that work with Conlon was you know the way to structure my continuation bet bluffing. And uh, having a real consideration for backdoors, in theory here, it's very hard to construct a range for like like as a I guess you could say like with an equilibrium raised through, range through a solver multi way three ways against like these field calls here when what you would do with your range here usually a multi way spot is bet very very small at equilibrium. Um, and I would imagine that this spot would usually be checked almost a hundred percent. But again, I go back to this is that you're not betting your range. You're betting your hand right. for profitability. Um, I don't know if I would bet here. I, it's probably not that bad to bet here. I mean, obviously you've got an overcard, a backdoor flush draw, and you are peeling towards the nuts. Um, one of the reasons why I might bet in position specifically in your spot, second to last to act is that I think you would benefit from actually getting the button out of the hand. Now I know that you say he's a special, but I'm talking about position. If you can be last 
it just does great things for your hand, right? Like if you bet and the button folds and you one or two guys call from up front, you can see how much easier the hand is to play. We're not doing it to make the, the hand easy to play, but it's just with position with this hand, depending on what the turn and river cards are, is very, I think with this specific draw, just makes the hand very, very easy, or it's much easier as opposed to being out of position, which is why like if you open this hand from up front, you got three field callers, I, I very well might check call. Right, but I, I don't yeah. mind the bet here, but I do want to get the button out of the hand, which is not what happens. So you bet fifty, the button calls, and it goes fold, fold. So now the pot's two hundred. Right, and uh, I expect the button pretty much to never fold. Actually, from what <laughs> I've observed in the last hour or so. So uh, uh, my, you know, my yeah, so, but my image is to the rest of the table is uh, very solid. I've I've shown down nothing but very strong hand so i'm i'm kind of hoping that my bet gets some credibility uh with the other players get them out and you know we get to you know keep this pot heads up with uh, the the kind of wacky unpredictable guy yeah um so th that was kind of my thought process at, at, at the time yeah and uh, you know it kind of worked out optimally so we are uh, heads up uh to the turn with the the kind of super lag and uh yeah pot 200 so mm. the turn comes the ace of hearts okay and so now we've got the top pair with the open ender right and uh i chose at this point to uh at 75 dollars yeah i mean the... i think that that's fine i mean i think here you've got a situation where you've made top pair it sounds to me like you think that this guy is so far out there you just have the best hand here and probably checking through just is going to give him probably a free card that you probably otherwise might get called. Like, it seems to me like you're saying that he's just going to call with any pair and a six here. So you can just bet small, like 50 or 75 to get value. Right. I mean, I guess right. occasionally he might run into aces up, but, but you could, you can even call probably like raises across turns unless it's like all ends and stuff like that. So I, I think this is fine. So you bet 75. Okay. Right, and so he responds with a pretty quick um, uh, two hundred dollar raise. Oh, okay. Two, 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 two hundred. So it's one hundred twenty five more for me to call. Two, two hundred. So once, so seventy five to two hundred, right? Yeah. Okay. Yep. So again, here, uh, one lamp hero, a six of clubs from the cutoff to twenty five. Special villain on the button calls, big blind calls, and uh, it's four ways. Seven, five, four, two spades, one club, check to hero 50, button calls, fold, fold, pots 200, turns the ace of hearts, hero bet 75, button raises to 200. So this usually is going to represent, yeah, I mean, it could be like aces up. It could be maybe a slow played set, but I, I think the tendency for slow plays is lessened when you bet on the flop and there's two people left behind to act on this guy. Like, I don't think he's calling with two pair or, or slow plays. I mean, he could have like the mortal nuts, right? But sounds to me like he might have, you know, he was floating you with ace high, like a hand like ace jack or ace queen, or he's made aces up, right? It doesn't matter because when you bet 75 into 200, the pot now is 475. It's 125 for you to call. I mean, you, you have equity here. You're getting four to one, right? You have 20% equity in immediate price because you could have two pair out. So there's really nothing to be done here but call. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm sure there's no fold equity against, like, ace-jack. You know, if you floated the flop and hit ace-jack and it's deciding to raise, you're not going to get him to fold, right? So I'm assuming you right. called. Yep, yep. Okay. I fold, or uh, I, I call, yep. and then we get a uh, pretty interesting river here. We've got the six of hearts to give me the aces up. And one thing that I, w I was going to say on, on that turn, um, first thing I... I thought of that came to mind since he's been playing any two cards is that any three, you know, three, five, three, four, eight, three is now double gutted. And so I kind of have that in mind, uh, even though I am, my hand improves here. Yeah. But does I'm, he know, but does he know that though? Like you're, you're, you, you, I mean, I didn't even pick that up like on the surface. So what you're saying is, is that any one with a three in it is a one card double gut shot, which is, 
somewhat of a unique situation. Like if you have pocket threes and the board seven, five, four, eights, right? You've got a gut shot to a wheel on the bottom and a six on the top. But I mean, like you're saying, I mean, like I can barely see that, you know, like I, like on the surface, you're saying you think that this guy's yeah. like, oh, I've got five, three, I'm going to raise a pair and a double gut shot. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think that's a little bit over. <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, it, well, it's, maybe. it's I mean, often he, missed. He, so, um, but I mean, if he has five, three on the flop, he, he might be floating thinking, you know, any six is great. And, you know, and then, you know, if he already kind of has that in his mind, if he's got five, five, three, four, six, I don't know. Uh, yeah, probably, probably not. This that. is what I would do. I mean, I think at this point, uh, this is really, actually, this is really, really interesting here because this one's really close. Because normally what I would suggest is that, and this is a great example of how you deviate. This is a very large deviation in live poker for maximum value. So, I mean, a normal approach here would be like, all right, I'm going to check and quite possibly check fold to a lot of players. So this is like one of these little things I call like CLP things called like Fifth Street Chicken where you've got a medium strength to strong hand, but it's not the nuts. And specifically when you get raised on the turn, like if you had top two or if you had a set and a straight comes out and you bet and somebody raises you and you call, you know, you have some equity moving to the river, you miss, then you check and now you figure out, hey, like I'm going to check. Am I going to check fold here? It depends on what the guy does. If I check, he'll sometimes check behind and I'll have the best hand, which is great. We can look at that from pot odds on the turn. But a lot of times if we check at the end and he checks and he bets, we're going to fold. However, in this case, um, Ryan, this is a special villain where you might not want to check here because he's going to call you with ace jack. He's going to call you with lower aces up hand, right? And he's not going to raise you here unless he has like a straight. And because the only straights that he could raise you with on the turn that contain an eight is eight, six, and the river's a six, and you also have a six in your hand, I don't think he has many eight sixes. So when you bet the end here, you're just really not going to get raised, right? And then, you know, if you do get raised one out of like 30 times, you can just comfortably fold. So again, that's me saying that this guy will not raise at the end here unless he has an eight. I find it very hard for him to have an eight. Maybe he has ace eight. And this is a special villain. So normally I would check and evaluate here and possibly check fold to a normal person given this line mm -hmm. here though this guy seems so bad that he could be raising you with lesser aces up and just like naked ace x of spades ace nine of spades ace ten of spades that he will call a bet with on the end but he's going to check back on the river so the pot 600 you guys have i would say 250 what 375 you got 425 is that right 425 right. in your stack the pot 600 yeah. Um, man, I wish you were deeper, but I might bet, I might come out and bet 150 here and you're just not going to get raised that much. So the question is, is that can, are you good here more than, cause I'm assuming that he's going to call. So I'm making the very large assumption he's going to call with anything that he's raised with on the turn. So the question now is, is that we don't have to worry about, oh, when I bet, you know, is he going to. You know, he needs to, when I'm called, I need to be good here 50% of the time or more. No, he's going to call you. There's no doubt about that. So the question is, mm -hmm. are you good here more than 50% of the time? I might bet 150 here. I think it's really close against a special villain. What, what ended up happening? Uh, yeah, I wasn't sure exactly what to do. And I ended up checking here and he fired 325 into 600. See, I don't understand. So again, this to me, I'm not talking, I'm sorry, Chris, I'm reading some comments in the live chat. Uh, you didn't say the guy was overly wild, did you? Uh, well, I mean, he's, yeah, he's playing every hand. Well, he's playing every hand, but that, but that does that mean that he's bluffing off his stack post-flop? Well, he, I, I wouldn't say he's necessarily bluffing off his stack, but his, his, bluffing frequency is definitely much higher than than the average uh, well all right so if you want to listen if you want to obviously you can check you can check the river to try to induce a bluff right but what i was reading in the chat was i didn't have that information because or maybe i didn't understand it but let's just like make the assumption for some or let's just think about this guy not being that wild just for conceptual visual visualization because people i don't understand people who think oh then we'll just check call with this hand if you're up against somebody who's not like a wild person 
or like a bluffer or somebody like that, why would you check call the river here? The only reason to check, there are two reasons to check call. To get somebody to value own themselves, meaning to value bet a hand that's worse than yours, that they would otherwise fold if you bet or to bluff. And people, and most times that situation is not, neither one, you know, neither one of those situations is true. Now, if the guy is a wild, but it's not like, oh, I'm going to take a medium strength to non-nut hand on the river and I'm going to check call with it. Like, I'll just check call. When, when it doesn't fit into either one of those categories, the guy's not going to value own himself and he's not going to bluff. So why would you check call with a, with a medium to strong hand at the end on the river? Check calling on the river at these stakes is usually bad from up front. Now, if you're going to tell me that he's wild and he's sort of maniacal and you've seen him bluff quite a bit, then fine, okay? I, it, it's just hard for me to figure out a bluff here on the turn. You know, he would basically have to be betting the river here with no pair, right? Because a lot of times people aren't going to turn pairs into bluffs. And what I mean by that is a three is a straight and eight is a straight. So what's his bluff here? How much did he bet at the end? 325 into 600. It's a pretty, pretty good, healthy bet here at 1-3. Um, three twenty-five. I mean, like I said, it's it's interesting because I wouldn't expect him to bet anything for this sizing except an eight, and I find it hard for him to have an eight here. So when I go back a couple of minutes ago to, I think your hand specifically is probably one of the better hands to call with because you block the fact that he has an eight. And what I mean by that is is that. On seven five four, a flop straight is six eight, right? And I'm mm-hmm. um, looking at that because he raised the turn, right? When you bet he raised on the ace. So when the river comes to six, there aren't many eights. There aren't many sixes left in the deck, right? For him to have eight six. Now he could have ace eight off, could have ace eight of spades. But when somebody is basically representing very high polarization where I don't think he's betting a three here, this is an eight plus, and he's been shown to bluff, then I would call. I mean, that, that's how you'd have to look at it here. What, what ended up happening? Uh, so, yeah, I, I did uh, feel that against this particular guy who's, who's just kind of at the other end of the spectrum, I, I had to make a call. So um, I did just call, and he shows up with ace 10 of spades. Yeah. Oh, oh, wow. So he was bluffing the river, huh? He, he turned, yeah, I, I Apparently, I mean, I don't see. Wow, what that's else. amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. But I do want to. This is a really nice call, and because or there ended up being a really nice hand. But I do want to. So you call, and Villain has, uh, Ace of Spades, Ten of Spades, right? So, again, I hope you followed me. Why I think your hand would be a call it, because he's rep any hand <laughs> any cards that you have the block in eight. I think becomes paramount here when he polarizes yeah. to this sizing. But normally. Ryan, if you were to tell me, hey, the villain has ace 10 of spades here. Let, have a, let, let's look at it this way, Ryan and, and the chat. Let's say we haven't acted on the river yet, right? And Ryan comes in and he says, the river's a six, and it's seven, five, four, ace, six, and we have ace, six. We know the villain has ace 10 of spades. Like maybe he turns his hand over, we see it, but he doesn't know that we see it. So if I said to you, Ryan, you know the villain has ace 10 of spades here, what would you have done on the river? from up front uh, yeah def- definitely bet of course call. you would bet right because he's yeah. most likely going to check back and he'll call so that's the point that i was getting at that that's why i wouldn't check the river that hand's not really supposed to bet it sounds to me like he doesn't know what the fuck he's doing right like it's a really strange hand to polarize <laughs> yeah right yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. I, I really um, didn't think that his turn raise was um uh you know like super I don't know out there. I, I I felt like he was he was bumping it up because that card helped him in some way, um, and, you know, because it was only you know a hundred and twenty five dollar race, you know, seventy five to two hundred. Yeah, it kind of felt like he's improved somehow. He's looking to take control, and he's 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 probably gonna bet river if if he misses his draw. Right. Right. Or right. If he if he has draw. Right. So kind of what my logic was and and also the fact that you know if you did happen to improve to ace uh five ace four 
um, you know, now, I, you know, I just, I just uh, one up in there on the river with a six. So. Well, yeah. Well, it's interesting, right? Like he bets with three twenty five at the end with ace ten of spades, not knowing what what he does. Do you think you know it? It's hard to get in this guy's head. Would he do that with ace five or ace four? Because that has a little more showdown value. His ace is up, right? Wouldn't he? Would he just check it right. down? It doesn't seem like he has any idea what's going on. Normally, you'll see that button clicking from out of position because they don't know what to do, and they'll just go to showdown on the river in position, which is why I like a bet from you from out of position. But, Ryan, i got to move along. Thank you. If you like what you've seen here, please hit the subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this call in hand, hit the like button down below. To check out CrushLivePoker.com, click on the link in the description. Use the code YTA300 to get the first 30 days for free.